This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Suspect in shooting of police inspector now in custody. 25-year-old Randall Gallimore, who was listed as wanted in connection with the shooting injury of a police inspector in Linstead St. Catherine yesterday, is now in police custody. Gallimore was arrested in a police operation in Wakefield, Linstead in the parish earlier yesterday evening. According to reports from the St. Catherine North Police, the inspector and his team were on duty in the town center when they observed the two men whose actions aroused their suspicion. The men were accosted, however, one of them reportedly pulled a firearm and opened gunfire. The police inspector and the 22-year-old taxi operator were injured during the exchange of gunfire. One of the two men was held on the spot while Gallimore was pursued and subsequently arrested in the operation. The inspector, who was shot in the left side of his face, was treated and released from the hospital. The police are maintaining a presence in the area as they seek to reassure residents that they will continue to work to keep them safe. Teens killing threatens a fragile peace in Trench Town. The homecoming for an aunt turned tragic for 15-year-old Nevada Teflon Maitland on Friday after a gunman on Forte Street in Trench Town, Kingston, broke a truce and fired a single fatal round, which struck the unsuspecting teen. His family told the news that the Tivoli Gardens High School student, who should have entered grade 10 when the new school year began yesterday, was not the intended target. When the shot fire, we never know nobody gets shot. We think in a day year the shot fire, a relative said. The resident said that although there has been a feud in the area for some time, tensions had been quelled and a sense of peace had engulfed the community. The shooting came as a shock. It's straight shot. It was like everybody was out there. Him auntie come back from firing and him a celebrate, and him come out to meet him auntie. The bullet come right through the gate and Nevada sit down right here, so. Grandmother Winifred Morris told the news. The bullet pierced a metal gate and struck a Maitland, who was among children, seated at the front of his home. Him head mash up. Him not get to spend no time with his aunt. Him just start come a road. Him still young and act like eight or nine years old, a relative said. Relatives said that Nevada was a playful child who was very bright and business-minded. When my brother go to work, he bring the two of them behind him. Anywhere he go, add the two of them, Aunt Kenesha Murray said. His mother said him call her and ask her if she all right, and she tell him she all right. But she asked, why Teflon asks if me all right? Morris said she spoke to Nevada by phone hours before he was killed, and he was excited that his aunt was visiting. Morris also said a Midlands father has been left heartbroken. Him ball right through, right through the night. Me a fear watch him. Him grow them as them mother and father. Them just kill off my grandson so, she said. The residents believe the death could erode the gains made to achieve peace. The next man that was targeted by the shooter never have no gun. If that man did have a gun, more people would have get shot, one resident said, pointing to the possibility that there could have been more casualties. Tivoli Gardens High Principal Marvin Johnson told the news that the Ministry of Education has pledged to send support for the guidance counseling unit. He is a very quiet young man who really tries hard. It's unfortunate and as a school community, we really don't want to lose any of our students. We are indeed a praying and a bonding as a team, Johnson told the news. Johnson said that the school will reach out to Midlands a family to give support. The police are aware of threats made to avenge the teens killing. Head of the Kingston Western Police Division, Senior Superintendent Michael Phipps, told the news team that cops are now keeping a close watch on the area. The police have listed a man known as Desroy Walker, otherwise called Shamar, as a person of interest in the investigation. They are urging him to report to the Denham Town Police Station. No decision made to sell Inzwood agricultural lands, says government. The government says it has not made any decision to sell agricultural lands in Inzwood, St. Catherine. Over the weekend, the opposition raised the questions about agricultural lands in the area that were embarked for agricultural purposes but were now being considered for housing development. In a release on Monday afternoon, the government said members of the cabinet met with representatives of Sugar Company of Jamaica Holdings and the National Environment and the Planning Agency. 
During the meeting, it was outlined that Model Agricultural Production Limited, a company associated with businessman Michael Lee Chin, is in possession of a lease for the lands in question. It further outlined that while a portion of the lands is being utilized for agricultural production, other entities associated with Mr. Lee Chin have expressed an interest in purchasing a portion of the leased lands for housing. However, as put forward by the opposition, the conditions of the lease restrict the use of the land to agricultural purposes only. Cabinet says both SEJ and the NEPA have been asked to follow up Monday's briefing with a detailed report on the Innswood lands, proposed and ongoing developments in the area, as well as agricultural prospects and plans. Deans of Discipline want more resources to deal with behavioral issues in schools. The National Association of Deans of Discipline has expressed a concern about the inequitable distribution of human and physical resources to address behavioral issues among students in public schools. NADD President Samuel Smalling says schools that receive students with the lowest exam passes face more behavioral challenges and will need greater resources to support programs. There were several violent incidents among students across the island during the last school term. Mr. Smalling is worried about the transition of students from online to full face-to-face -face classes, arguing that more resources are needed to set up reading and behavior modification programs so that the transformation that is required can take place. So we need resources to put in um, reading programs, behavior modification programs, so that we can the, 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 the transformation that is required can take place. And deans of discipline are ready and prepared, but we need resources. However, there's only one dean of discipline within a school. While in many schools, you have um, the 1 to 500 ratio, 250 ratio with guidance counselors. There are some schools with 2,500 students and one dean of discipline, and 1,500 students, one dean of discipline. So there's in, in, inequity in the system. The, the first responders, as our teachers, have to be proactive and know how to engage students in a way that will help them to transition so that the, 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 the incidents, to, to reduce the level of conflicts and so on that will, 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 may take place. So it needs special skills to deal with these issues as our students are coming from some serious environment and need special support. There are many of our teachers who have migrated where they were strong in terms of discipline and giving support to the area of discipline within our schools. And now they have moved on. It has left a void or a vacuum that is created. So how educators and administrators pivot during this time will determine how well um, they will be able to deal with the, the void that has been created as a result of teacher migration. Mom loses a third son to violence. It was an all too familiar affair for Annette Lodge as soon after she heard explosions ringing out in a nearby community on Sunday afternoon, she was told that another of her sons had been murdered. The mother of eight, six boys and two girls has now lost her third son to violence. This time, her 24-year-old son, Sheldon Williams, of Winter Road and Relay Road addresses, were among two men fatally shot on Roden Crescent in St. Andrew after a game of football on church grounds. The other deceased is 25-year-old Oshin Ashley of a 440 Drive address. When the news visited Lodge's McKinley Crescent home on Monday, she was surrounded by relatives and friends offering support. She invited the news team inside to relate her painful ordeal for the third time. I was eating my dinner, me here they shot them. I me run come down the road. Everybody grow on the, Lodge said. As she missed the run come, said them shot Sheldon. But I didn't know he was dead, Lodge said, pointing to someone close by. A visit to the hospital would confirm that, that Williams had died from multiple gunshot wounds, mostly to his upper back. The grieving mother said Williams reared animals and operated a bar for a living. Me not tell no lie, he's a nice youth, she said. Now our three sons me have we dead, them shoot them, Lodge said. She also recalled that Ricardo, another of her sons, was slain while on his way to work. 
When the news visited 440 Drive, Ashley's mother, Alisa Garcia, and his sister, Peter Gay Nelson, were reflecting on his life in the company of friends. They said Ashley, a security guard, was an avid football fan who played the sport at the location every Sunday. Im jovial, anywhere at all him, the people have to laugh. Me not have nothing bad to say about him. Not because he is family, but me can point out nothing bad to say about him, Nelson said. They added that Ashley, a father of three, worked tirelessly to take care of his family. Nelson spoke of her brother's charm with women, adding that she thought that would herald his downfall, not a bullet. I just that with him, me think a woman would kill him, to how him just walk around and have woman all about, she said. The chatter brought laughter for his mother, who was still visibly shaken. She told the news that she last spoke to her son on Friday when he visited her in Yorton, St. Catherine. By me go open the bar and him missy drive up and him spend a while with me and spend and support me. When him a leave him say, Mommy, the girl them nice. He mug me up and say, Mommy, me I come back Saturday because me like the vibes, Garcia said, showing a tattoo with his name on her chest. She told the news that her son was not involved in wrongdoing as he would walk freely anywhere and was never in hiding. The St. Andrew South Police are probing the double murder. The division has seen a near 24% reduction in murders this year, accompanied by a 14% dip in shootings. Up to September 1, 90 murders were committed, compared to 118 during the corresponding period in 2021. Robberies and breakings are the only other major crimes with increased reports year on year. The nation's murder count for 2022 stands at 1,018, according to the latest police statistics. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.